And oh, I actually see one. Oh, I just watched him eat it. Oh, that's a big one. There we are. Got him. <laughs> oh my gosh. Got him. Oh, there's, there's, this might be a red here. This is a clear example that you don't need by bait. Another big trout. Look at that head shin. That is a nice trout there. It, oh no, I just lost the. <laughs> oh, got thumped again. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is turning to be an amazing day. All right, hey, this is Luke with Salt Strong. In this video, we're gonna be doing an exploration trip. We're in an area that I've never been to before. This is early morning. We've had a couple cold fronts come in, so the temperature's starting to cool down, but we're still in the fall. It's not super cold yet. And we're dealing with a low tide situation. And so I'll just go through, this will be a walkthrough of uh, on the water fishing uh, video, and I'll just walk through the trip. And so what I'm doing right now, I just got out to this flat. This is a shallow flat. I'm seeing some birds. There's actually some dolphin working up here. And so now it's about finding the fish. You need to find the, the right depth and where the fish are. And so I'm gonna start with basically power fishing. This is the Slam Shady Bomber. This is a five inch paddle tail. It's on a weighted hook. And this enables me just to cover a lot of ground. And I'll basically be going fast. I'm gonna be hitting potholes. Like if you can see right over here, there's a pothole. I just heard that dolphin uh, go after something. So there's at least some life here. I'm seeing a little bit of bait past this pothole. And, uh, and just really just trying to find where they are. In many cases at low tide, they get in potholes. Sometimes they're up in a, a pothole that's a foot and a half deep. Sometimes they want it three feet deep. Sometimes they want it six feet deep. Every day is a little bit different. And so uh, we're just gonna cover ground and I'll just report to you what's working and hopefully we get some fun fish catching in between. Well, yeah, uh, Pelican just dove right here. So we have some bait. Pelican literally dove within casting range. That's cool. So I'm gonna start slowing down now. Now it's definitely not power fishing. Now we're just going slow and there's a series of potholes out here that I'm gonna cover pretty aggressively. Okay, I'm looking down here. I'm, every time I get in a pothole, I look to see what kind of life is there. And I'm seeing some, some bait fish. All of them are about like three to four inches in size. So this lure might be a little bit big. So I'll give this one a little bit and we might switch to a smaller lure if I don't get any strikes anytime soon. Okay, so what you want to look for, I don't know if you, the camera can pick it out. Ooh. Oh man, I just had one. But uh, right here in front of the boat, that's all small stuff mess with. Right in front of the boat, looks like little raindrops in the water. Those are just little small bait fish. And if you, if you find that, that was a big old needle fish that's messing with me. If you find that up on a flat, that is a very high success rate of catching trout and redfish and snook, but especially trout out here in the open. Where, oh, where there's grass. Oh, that was a good thump. Eat it again. There we are. Got him. Oh, dang. Yeah, those are, those are trout. So I was almost proved my point perfectly if I could just get that hook. So oh, there, oh, it followed it all the way up. I think I have my drag a little bit too loose. So those trout, when, they, when there's seagrass and those little bait fish, there's going to be some trout. And so we're, I just went over this little pothole over there. I'm going to Kind of get myself away from it and see if we can can get a fish on the board. Oh, there we are, got him. Oh, coming right at me. <laughs> or it's tiny. No, it's a decent size. Oh, that was a trout though. So that was like literally exactly where they should have been. Let's see if we can get one of his buddies. That was a decent size one. That one was literally swimming right to the boat. So we found the bait. We found, a, we found some potholes, we found some ambush zones, and those trout were basically exactly where they're supposed to be. So, oh, I might have to get a smaller lure out because they're, they're hitting aggressively, but they're just really not getting, they're not big enough to take this big old paddle tail down. This is, this is better for the bigger fish, like 20 inches and above. Smaller fish will still hit it, but the bigger fish will just suck it down a whole lot better and the hookup ratio is better. But we'll do a few more casts up in there. I do like this bigger lure just to just kind of weed out the smaller fish. Dang, I just missed another one. All right. So we went up, tried the deeper zones, and they weren't really holding. So I started working a little bit shallow, and I just made a cast on this pothole. And we have first fish of the morning. A little small guy. We're going to have to keep him away from these birds. It's a little trout, hit the bomber. And we're gonna go ahead and 
see which way these birds are facing and make sure we get them off in a different direction. But in the fish in the first probably 10 minutes or so since we've been out here, so that is uh, always a good thing. It's the importance of reading maps and knowing the tides and the feeding trends. And for you insider members, I have a link down below. I filmed, I recorded the pre-trip plan and just talked about the, the spot selection, um, just the theories behind the spot selections and then uh, you know the, the what to look for. So I did, I did buzz by a couple other spots before we stopped um, because I was looking for something in particular. So I'll save that for insider members. So I'll have a link down below to that. And these birds are out of control. We have cormorants all around us. And what these birds have realized is that they can hang by boats and, and the, the boats will scare up pinfish and stuff like that. And they'll just get some free meals and that the boat won't, boats won't hurt them. So now we have four behind us, two in front of us. This is getting out of hand. And I think there's a lot of, it must be a lot of live bait people here where they chum up the water and so the birds have just realized, okay, they've come up by the boats and now they can get a bunch of free, free food. So a little bit disappointing. They're protected birds, so obviously you can't touch them or anything. But a little bit disappointing to see that that's, that's happening over here. It's happening over in St. Pete as well. So we've got another fish on. Looks like another trout. This one's a little bit bigger. This one just hit. This is on the open grass. So let's get this guy off before these birds get to him. Watch out there, buddy. So this is unfortunate. So we look at all these birds here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, they're all looking at this trout. Now we've got six, seven birds, and I'm just gonna quickly go to the back of the boat. Usually don't throw fish, but I'm gonna kind of have to here. Cause look at this, this is terrible. So we're gonna go, oh, don't, don't flip out trout. So I'm gonna go back and see if we can save this trout's life. Oh, <laughs> bad throw, but. Is the least away from those birds. Uh, we, you know, no matter what the wildlife, whether you're a bird fan or dolphin fan or whatever it is, always best to not feed them, because all you do is encourage more. But whoa, that one did about grab my lure. Oh my gosh! So all you do is that's bad for fish, right? It's not. It's not. Or it's bad for the birds. It's not good for wildlife to be dependent on humans. So please, if you're out fishing, don't feed the birds or the dolphins or the alligators, right? It's just not. Not good. This is a. This is what happens. These obviously have been fed. They're literally just following the boat. This is crazy. Check that out. There's six of them behind the boat. Craziness. All right, we'll keep going shallower. In many cases, getting up there super shallow, there's gonna be less pinfish, and these birds are gonna realize that they're exerting a lot of energy and they're not getting much reward, so they'll eventually leave. But um, yeah, it's kind of frustrating. Yeah, seeing some uh, some activity up here. And so I'm doing what I normally don't do, but I'm fishing into the wind. And I have a full bomber on, so we're in the shallow water. This is redfish territory. We're now redfish nook territory, not as many trout up the shallow. We've lost our birds. So just as predicted, those pesky birds are finally away from us. And uh, now we're going super slow and just covering this shallow water and there's some little white zones every so often. And so I'm basically just hitting every one of these white zones and uh, just hoping that there's a, a redfish or a snook laid up in there. The fact that I just saw some mullet spook, a bird just flew by and I saw some mullet, uh, some mullet push out. So the fact that the mullet are here is a very good sign. So we're gonna, gonna work this zone for a bit. I've got the, again, the, full, the full bomber on so I can punch up into the wind then we'll see if we can get some some uh, drag pullers there we are there's a drag puller oh this might actually be a trout oh yeah big trout nice fish look at that head shake <laughs> he's mad at the world yeah so we're uh we're up here again getting up in the shallows this is more the redfish territory so could we'll see a trout but usually when you get trout in this type of stuff it's a big one so this one, uh, this one's definitely, I'd say a 20, 20 inch or so, maybe a little bit plus or minus. So we'll get this guy up. No birds to have to worry about now. Nice trout, bomber right in the face. Gotta love that. We'll let this guy go. 
All right, so we tried that area for a bit. We caught that nice trout, had some follows, but really didn't see as many fish as, as I'd like. And so I went to another area. This is an area that early in the morning I was, try, I was about to go to, but there was a dolphin just wrecking house. And uh, so I thought, you know, time's, time's gone by, those fish should settle down. Just saw a few reds, so now we're gonna start going slower and uh, see if we can get some, uh, some reds to eat. The, uh, the forecast was definitely not as right as I'd hoped. <laughs> it was supposed to be a lot warmer. The, the water is definitely cooler than planned. Definitely wish I brought a jacket today. But uh, those fish are here, they're just not very aggressive. So we're gonna just have to make sure to get some, just cover, cover this area tightly. Ideally, we can do some sight fishing. This water is nice and clear and it's relatively calm back up in this spot. But uh, so far the reds I've seen have been, basically there's a big old sheep's head right there. The reds I've seen have all been up in, you know, pretty shallow water, like two feet, two feet or less, and then hanging around areas with some uh, some contour. And so we're just going to keep keep fishing this, keep fishing the the edges of the sand and the grass, and see if we can finally get one to eat. All right, so I'm switching over to oh no, I'm switching over to a. Uh, a jerk shad because it's getting nice and calm and, and clear here and and we have some some competition for for our redfish so we have two dolphin working their way in that is not good so we're going to kind of hope they they hang out and hope sometimes that'll just push those reds closer to the shore so we're going to keep fishing it even though these dolphin are are certainly scaring everything because this was the area that i'd I'd done on my pre-trip plan and I want to stick to the plan. And it sure looks good. We can see, like looking up here, you can see a lot of mold up on the surface way up there. Some birds feeding. Like this is, this is looking very, very good. If the, other than those dolphin, everything else that I'm seeing looks very conducive to, uh, to getting some fish. So we'll, we'll just keep on going up here. So just be super slow. Yeah, look at all that. There, I'll be surprised if there's not some more reds hanging around uh, around all that mullet. So calm and clear, Alabama leprechaun, right? Jerk shad, split tail, light weighted hook, and uh, those paddle tails are just a little bit, a little bit too much vibration for, for this clear water and for this calm of water. So we have a lot of moving water up here. I don't know if that's a nervous school of reds or if that's mullet. Oh, it looks like, yeah, probably just mullet. Either way, that's a good sign. Oh, I think I just got thumped. Yep, yep, there we are. <laughs> See, oh no, I just lost up. <laughs> oh, got thumped again. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is a trout. This is a really big trout. I think it's a trout, yeah. That is a nice trout. Look at the size of this thing. This thing was up here messing with these mullet. And I, I did everything I could to lose them. <laughs> this thing, either there's a bunch of them or this guy was just not taking no for an answer. Yeah, the other trout was pretty big. This one is very big for, for Gulf Coast trout. This is a really, really big trout. That's cool. Let's go get this rod out of the way. So I switched to the leprechaun. And I got into this area where there's a bunch of mullet and I was just like, just chatting. I was like, man, this is, there's got to be some fish, some fish down here. And look at the size of this guy. That is a proper trout. We gotta check out the size of this guy. That is a nice trout there. So getting up there in the shallows, targeting reds and snug. This is a fun bycatch. And he was not taking no for an answer on that one. So that's interesting. So I've switched rods. You see, I've got a rod with the, so we just let that trout go. I was kind of slowly going back up to get into that zone and got another good fish and lost them. And I, usually when you get, golly, <laughs> this, is a, this is a good little spot. Usually when you get into it, this is another big trout. This is another really big trout. But usually when you get into, uh, into a, like a hook set into a bigger fish with these jerk baits is, you know, you get a good hook set and the hook stays, at least for the most of the rods that I use. This rod, golly, that's a big trout. This rod, this rod has a, uh, a, a more flimsy tip. 
And so I'm finding that my hook sets are much less, uh... oh man, that's a good fish. Whoa, my hook sets just don't have the ability to, to get a good hook set when these, when these lures are rigged weedless. So let me show you this trout. And this is another solid one. Oh, he's not happy. He is not happy with me. Come on, buddy. Come on. Gonna let you go. All right, another solid trout. Check out the size of that guy. That is a proper, proper trout. I got the leprechaun right there in his face. This is, this is a lot of fun. There should be some redfish mixed in too, but if not, I'll be more than happy to catch some more of these guys. There we are, lures out. Off for the races. We found ourselves a good spot here in Bradenton. This is a lot of fun. This is exactly where I'd picked on the pre-trip plan too, which is really cool. So the old strategies have, uh, have continued to be working that we've been talking about in the weekly game plans for that we do for Insider Club members. It has just been spot on and should in this same game plan should work for uh, for at least until we get a few more fronts. Obviously, we'll keep we'll keep you guys, you insiders posted on the changes. But yeah, so we're just going to uh, I'm going to go back up. The current is kind of pushing me down. So, oh, my gosh, I just had another one. <laughs> oh, my God, I lost them again. See, like these rods, it is rod selection is such an important thing. It is. is much as I hate losing fish, it's just good to get a reminder that the uh, the rods I normally use are the are the right ones. Because that was a good fish. I mean, you saw that rod bend, and uh, that's now. I don't know how. I forgot how many fish I've lost today. Oh god! <laughs> another one. <laughs> like this isn't this isn't oil. You can look at that boil. That was a big fish. That was another big trout. I'm not getting hooked on oysters. That was, those are proper fish. I'm about to rig this up on a separate rod, but oh, it's just, I'm on a good bite. I don't really don't want to do anything different. Let's see if we can do that again. There must just be an absolute ton of, of nice fish up there. That was another, it looked like another trout too. Oh, oh man. I'm gonna have to do a Bill Dance hook set. There we go. <laughs> Even the Bill Dance hook set didn't work on that one. Base this lure, it mimics a scared shrimp and an injured bait fish. Oh, there we are, there we are, there's a better one. That's a, that's a better hook set, another nice trout. But you basically wanna, basically wanna mimic that, where it's either a scared shrimp, injured bait fish, so that way if they're feeding in the shrimp, or if they're feeding on, uh, on lures, you're gonna have a really good shot. And check out this, check out this trout, this is, this is another 20 inch, over 20 inch trout. I mean, how cool. How cool is this? Not quite as big as the last one, but man, we're on a good bite. Another solid fish, gotta love it. Whew, this is a lot of fun. This is why I love inshore fishing. You never know what the next strike's gonna be and and as, as long as, as soon as you kind of understand these behavior patterns, they're, they're pretty easy to predict. As I said before, I never fished this area before. And I just used some, literally the pre-trip plan. Well, I, I feel I recorded this morning. It was like a minute and a half. It was just a really quick, like, hey, look at the tides, look at the wind. Oh, there we are. It's coming at me. <laughs> there we are. It's coming right at me, so I couldn't tell what it was. Another trout. Yeah, look at the tides, look at the wind, um, factor in what the, the feeding trends have been. And then obviously, you know, if the front's coming through, you gotta make a, kind of make some changes, but and just bring some good lures with you. Just a couple is all that's needed. And then it's about going out and have some fun. So here's a, what normally would be a very nice trout now it's not looking so hot. This is probably 17, 18 incher. Again, another solid fish. Couldn't resist the old leprechaun dancing there for him. Oh, oh and he splashed me. Oh, he got revenge for me there, but 
Whew, this is fun. So yeah, we'll, we'll find some reds. If not, I'm gonna still have an absolute blast doing this trout. All right, so we're, we're gonna position back up to where the, uh, most of the strikes were happening. This has been a really cool bite. I was talking about the rod before, and this is a big deal in that uh, it's not that I don't like this rod. This is a, this is a very nice rod. It's a St. Croix Avid. This is like a $250 rod, but it's the, uh, it's the medium power. So it's a 7.6 medium power, and that's great for an open and, you know, an exposed hook lure, like a, just like a jig head, right, with like a little paddle tail or for live bait fishing, obviously. But if you're using weedless soft plastics, when, when the, you know, the, the hook point in many cases will have to push through the soft plastic before it even touches the fish, if you have a rod with a flimsier tip, it's just gonna, it's just gonna decrease the odds that you get a good hook set. And so, um, you know, the, the trouble is that, is that every rod company is different. Like I use a lot of TFOs and for, the, for them, I like the medium power but their medium power rod feels very similar to the medium heavy of the St. Croix, of this Avid line. Um, so that was, you know, I got this rod a long time ago and I don't really use it that much just because I do a lot of weedless soft plastics and, and that this rod isn't very conducive for it. Um, I learned less on, on the hard way on a big triple tail one day and so I didn't use it, I was kind of out of spite, I didn't use it for a while. And, uh, and I decided to bring it back out just to test it and kind of regretting that decision. But it's still fun, right? It'll still work. It just won't work quite as effectively as a rod that has, uh, that has a little bit more power in the tip. And so the other rod I'm using is an extra fast tip. And it was, it's a prototype. You know, we're designing, um, designing some rods. And that, oh, I just got a good thump. There we are. Got him. <laughs> Look at that big trout. I love those big trout head shakes like that. But uh, so with the extra fast tip, is that it's almost too flimsy on the top as well. Like earlier when I was missing those trout at the beginning of the trip, those are smaller trout. So, you know, it's kind of easier to miss those. But, but even still, you know, the, that extra fast tip, it's, it's just a lot softer tip. And, uh, and I think that was a, uh, a reason why I was missing some of as well, just because the, the tip isn't quite as strong as what it could be. So we got another one. This one sucked it down pretty good. Get the pliers ready. And let's get this guy up. Another 20 incher here, I bet. Oh, come on, come on there, buddy. There we are. Yeah, probably 19, 20 inches. Solid fish. Leprechaun right there. Fish off, get him back early. These trout are pretty fragile. So just always try to have, you know, if you have, want to get a picture of it or whatever, just have somebody ready with the camera, quick pick, let it go, hold it off the side of the boat in case they're, they're pretty slippery in case they start freaking out. You don't drop them on the, on the boat. These are, these are the most fragile of the, of the inshore fish, you know, compared to like redfish and, and snook. So let's make sure to take care of them, especially these, these bigger ones. So I know there's some, there's gotta be some redfish in here. And we saw some reds on the, when we approached this area. So I know they're here. It's just a matter of getting past these, these hungry trout first. Let's see if we can double up again. Based on how it's been so far. Oh, I just, just spooked off a little flounder. So we've got some flounder in here as well. So again, rod tip up, I'm just doing a nice, I know the fish are here, so I'm not, this isn't about covering ground anymore. Now it's about just getting one of those bigger, smarter fish to eat. And so I'm just going a little bit slower. They have to, they have to have felt that there's some commotion going on. So I'm just doing just slow bouncing this jerk bait and basically trying to mimic as this little scared shrimp down there that's doing some short jerks, like short twitches, and then just slowly settles down. And the bites, the bites have happened on the little settle down. So now I cast about five feet up onto it. We're gonna just work it right over the edge. Should be getting thump right there. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is just on demand. This is, they are really, we clearly found the trend and it is, it is on point. 
working it over, working. Oh, I actually see one. Oh, I just watched him eat it. Oh, that's a big one. There we are. Got him. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, this will never get old. Oh man, this is a this is this one's nice too. This is this is a nice another trout. Look at the size of this trout. Oh my gosh. I literally just watched him come up and just slurp down the leprechaun too. This is unbelievable. So that's why it's just really important to be quiet, right? We're in here in clear, calm water. The, the thrashing, right? A little bit of fish noise doesn't matter. What you don't want to do is you don't want to be doing any stomping, right? Like I took my shoes off, not because I'm a hippie. It's because I want to, I want to be quiet and slowly move to get these fish. Look at the size of this trout. Solid fish. And that's probably 22 plus inch or so for the Gulf Coast. It's a really nice trout. I thought he was bigger when he came up and big old mouth shot out of the water. Again, quick pick, get him back in the water. Whew, this is fun. So lure's still good, been using the same lure the whole time. Dry, the, these trout, although they have teeth, they're really not good at fraying through lines. So I still feel for, for nicks, but all this action is, is still, it's still good to go. Just 20 pound, Mono leader, I don't use that fluoro stuff. Hasn't yet proven to, to work in my opinion. All right, so we're heading back up to the good area where those trout were and I'm testing out some, some new lures. This is a little shrimp lure. I poured it myself and I uh, thought, hey, we, we know there's trout here. Let's see how they respond to the shrimp lure. The fact that they're hitting the, the leprechaun means that there's a pretty good shot there that they're that they're uh, dialed in on shrimp too, because that leprechaun basically mimics both shrimp and fish. And uh, so we're just gonna kind of spend a little bit of time and do some lure testing. So I'm setting up, basically we're doing this shrimp as well as trying to find a good rig for this, for this lure. So I have a weighted hook. This is a custom weighted hook that we had made. It looks awesome in the water, but I really had, this is the first time I've had a chance to actually use it. And uh, since we're in, a good little, good little spot. You know, great time just to just to check. Oh, <laughs> good, good time to just take and test it out and make sure it works. Right? No, oh, there we are. There goes the missed another hook set. And again, this is this is one of those prototype rods that has a soft tip. And uh, that has been a common thing. That's why this isn't the full wet noodle. I call them wet noodle rods. This isn't you know, just a super like fiberglass, really flimsy rod, but the, the very tip section is very light and uh, just has a hard time, hard time getting hooked on these uh, soft plastics. Because in many cases that, that fish will just suck down that soft plastic and, and grab it and the soft plastic will, will double over. And that hook needs to be able to, to penetrate the soft plastic and the trout or redfish or snook for that matter. I think I got a thump, there we are, there we are. Another trout, and I lost another one. <laughs> so rod selection, guys. Rod selection is such a big deal for, for lure, using lures, particularly soft plastics. This has been a, a very clear example of how of improperly selected rod uh, can change the results. This is the, probably the most good fish that I've lost in a very long time. And it's the first, oh, I just got a bite. There we are. <laughs> lost them again. This is crazy. And this is the first time I came out with all soft tip rods. So, uh, so just be mindful of that when you're out there doing some shopping. And if you're an insider, you know, I have, um, we built, oh, there we are, got them. If you're an insider, this, uh, this is not being made of, but if you're an insider, we do have a lesson on, on a, it's a cheat sheet for fishing equipment. And uh, look, that was a good fish too, look at that wake. But we have a cheat sheet on fishing equipment and, and it just talks about the rods, like what to look for, power and action, what the difference is. And, and that way, you know, right now rods are so hard to get, like all the good ones are pretty much sold out. And, uh, but at least goes through what to look for, where you can go to a store and just know where what to feel for, and, and uh, that way you're not stuck with, the, with a rod that's not conducive for the type of fishing that you're doing. There we are. 
Nice fish. So I was using this uh, the same hook with the with the with the actual bomber paddle tail, the bigger paddle tail, and the hooker braid was 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 fine. There was no issues at all. But that was with my normal rod that has uh, that has just a stronger tip. But here you'll have a nice close up view of this of this lure. Pretty cool. Another nice trout. And these guys are totally fired up today. Quick hook out, thrown back. Lure is ready to rock for more action. Worth the cast. Oh, there, oh, had one. Yeah, so in many cases when you when you miss one, though, these trout will come back and hit it a second or third time. Another big trout. Look at that head shake. But what happened is I, I missed them. So I, so I missed them and but I just I just let it do it. Kept doing the normal tree where I didn't freak out. And, uh, and a lot of times these trout, when they miss a lure, they're, they're notorious for following it. And, and they'll follow for sometimes 10 plus feet. And so when you do miss them, whoa, when you do miss them, make sure to just keep doing the normal retrieve. And, and in many cases, they'll, they'll still hit us. Well, they've just got to calm down a little bit. Prototype shrimp lure right there in the space, whoa. And that's why, that's why you want to hold your fish over the side of the boat, trout in particular, because they're very slippery and they will, start freaking out without any notice. And if you if you drop them in the boat, that is uh, obviously you don't want to do that for a fish you're going to be releasing. So do all your do all your your work over the side of the boat. We already got our picture. That trout's now perfectly fine. Never hit the boat. Uh, didn't didn't touch, didn't rub off its skin with like a rag or anything, right? So let's get this lure back in action. Let's see if we can find some reds. I know they're in here somewhere. Oh, there's, there's, this might be a red here. No, another trout. <laughs> These are some thick trout. All right, well, this is going to be the last one. It's getting, it's getting close to noon, so we're going to have to head back. But man, what an awesome trip this has been. This is just, this is the cool thing about inshore fishing. You never really know how it's going to go. This is actually one of the bigger trout of the day here. You never know how it's going to go. And the cool thing is, is once you get dialed in the trends, you can have really good days in spots you've never been to before. I mentioned before, I literally have never fished this area. And uh, so first time here, and the first time was a blast. Whoa, whoa, let's make sure this guy doesn't do anything he shouldn't. But uh, for you Insider members, right? Uh, I have all, the whole video of the pre-trip plan already filmed. And as soon as I get back, I'll do the post-trip analysis where show what worked, what didn't work, you know, where we were what the tide was doing, what the wind was doing, so that you can look for spots just like this near you. And, uh, and so if you're not yet a member, highly recommend giving it a shot, right? We're an on online fishing club. Look at the size of this. Oh, he just got me. He just got me. But we're an online fishing club, and we, we really focus on just helping you find the fish, right? Helping you find the fish. That way you can go out without needing live bait, right? For many years, I thought we had to have live bait to catch any decent fish, and you don't. This is a clear example that you don't need live bait. You don't even need to go back to the same spot a million times to figure it out. You can learn the trends. As I was saying, if you, if you haven't yet tried the club, give it a shot. You have nothing to lose. As part of the club, you, we have online courses that'll set the foundation. We have a, three of our best online courses that'll set the foundation on finding spots, on positioning, and, and just all the rigging and stuff you need. And then every day, we, every week, we give you the, the best, the best uh, trends on what to do based on the, the feeding trends, as well as the weather and the tides. So we make it all as easy as possible so you can go and have days just like this on your own without having to have, again, live bait. All you really need is a, a good rod, right? We show you how to get the right gear, the right lures, rig them the right way, and you can have an absolute ton of fun out there in the water. So thank you so much for your time and watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best online fishing club for saltwater anglers, especially if you're interested in catching redfish, sea trout, snook, and flounder, there's nothing else like it. We actually guarantee you'll be catching more fish while saving time and money. And we do that through our premium education, our exclusive online community, and huge discounts on all the tackle you need. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon.